Hello, hello, and welcome to lesson number four. So in this lesson, we are going to cover the normal distribution and how to trade it. And in that, actually, it's going to be the next two uh, lessons. We're going to be covering the normal distribution. Um, and then we're going to be moving on to the frequency distribution. And then we're going to be moving on to some time series forecasting. So um, the normal distribution is essentially our bell curve here. And this is what a normal distribution looks like if we were to plot it into a bell curve. Now, if you remember from the previous lesson, I showed you SPTS and how to test for normality. The reason we need to do that is because we need to, to make sure that this is true. When we know that this is true, that the stock is, is behaving like this in the most recent data set, we can just trade this bell curve. That's all. That's all it comes down to is we can trade this bell curve, okay? And so... Why this is so important is because we can see where the values are going to fall the majority of the time. 2.1% of the time, they're going to fall either at the extreme left or at the extreme right. 13.6%, um, they're going to be here. And, you know, 68%, they're going to be right in the middle. Generally, stocks will drift one way or the other and then regress to the mean, which is back into the 68% range. So when you, when you hear of a regression to the mean, what we're talking about is regression back to the high probability 68% zone. Now, there's, there are many ways that we can calculate the normal distribution. We can use z-score. We can use the cumulative distribution function, or we can just plot the levels into, into a bell curve. Um, what we're going to use to determine the probability of where we're going to fall within the bell curve is by calculating something called the cumulative distribution function, or the cumulative distribution density. Now, if we want to take a look at what that would look like if we plotted it out, I have made an indicator for it, and it is public. If you type in CDD, you'll see cumulative distribution of a data set. If we launch that, we can pull up our data set. So we are operating from the October low still. It's going to run the analysis. It's going to test for normality. It is normally distributed, so we, we are good to go. We can go ahead and plot this. And so now we have our cumulative distribution density. And we'll see two levels, a red and a green. The red is the probability that we go lower. So up here, the probability that we went lower was 98%. And green is the probability we go higher. So here it was, you know, 60%-ish. Um, and all up here, we like peaked at around 99%, right? 99.99% is kind of where we turned around to the downside. And right now we're sitting at absolute, pretty much neutral, right? We're in the 50%, 50-50 range. So we're pretty much sitting neutral. Now this is helpful to see visually, like where the density rests, because we can see right now um, we're absolutely neutral, but we can actually take this one step further and calculate support and resistance based on our cumulative distribution. So if we take a look at SPY. This is SPY on the daily. So we know that it's normally distributed from the October low till now. We're going to keep operating on that. Why? Because it gives us enough data and if we draw a regression trend it is still pretty strong, right? It's 86%. We have fallen out. We're going to go lower but for the most part this is a very strong uptrend. This is very stable data to pull from. So um, we're going to keep operating on this October low premise. So what we're going to do is we need to export this data into Excel so that we can calculate the bell curve levels. So we're going to go up to here. We're going to export data. We're going to do ISO time and we're going to export, okay? So once we launch this here, we need to filter out this data because we want from our October low. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all of this. And sorry, this is on the daily time frame. Um, so we're going to go all the way down to 2022, 10, 13 for our October low. We're going to delete the rest. And there we go. So we have from October low till uh, current. Okay. Now, like PineScript, we need to um, tell Excel what we want to do in the same way 
as PineScript. So we have to code a bit into Excel, which is fine. Um, we need to create two variables, one called average and one called standard deviation. And we're going to define those variables with uh, an equals average. We're going to open up a bracket and we're going to just click this. And then we're going to enter. Then we're going to go equals STD stdev.p open our brackets comma I oh, know that's it so that's our standard deviation okay so now we're gonna calculate the probability we're gonna calculate two probability variables the probability that we go um, lower and the probability that we go higher, okay? And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna use a function in Excel called the normal distribution, right? No shocker there, that's what we're talking about today. So um, that function is called by going equals norm.dist. We're gonna open up our brackets and just like PineScript, it's gonna ask us for the input, so it wants the value that we're interested in, the mean, the standard deviation, and whether it's a cumulative data set. So we're going to put our value in this box here. So we'll click here, comma, this is our average, comma, this is our standard deviation. And the cumulative is true. We're assuming that this is the cumulative distribution. Okay. Now, if we put in a value like 400, we're going to see 17% we're gonna go lower than 400, okay? So if we just use that function to clean that up a bit, it looks nicer. Now to do the inverse, the probability that we go higher, we're gonna do, e um, we're gonna do equals, and we're gonna use the same normal distribution function, but because we're doing the inverse, we're gonna do one minus norm.dist and everything else is exactly the same. So, oops, our mean is the same, our standard deviation is the same, and true. Okay. So the probability that spy goes above zero dollars is 100%, okay? What about 400? It's 82. So we're gonna, again, use this little function up here to um, round our numbers, okay? So now how do we calculate our support and resistance from this? Well, we want to find the 68% range and then the severe outlier zones, okay? So what this means is when a stock is up here, the probability that we're going to um, shift to the left is 99%. When we're here, the probability that we're going to shift to the right is 99%. So we're going to use that to um, find the support and resistance levels, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this value. We're going to go up to data. We're going to go to what if analysis, goal seek. We're going to ask Excel to change that to 0 0.99. And we're going to ask it to accomplish that by changing our support level. And there it is. So 468 is... Um, our 0.99 or our 99%. So this is saying that 99% of the time, 99% um, of values are going to close below 468. So what we can do is we can go to our horizontal line and we can draw a red line at 468 and we can label it 99% which means 99% of our values are gonna close below this level. Then, the next level I care about, personally, is the 95%. 0 0.95, we wanna change it by changing H. That's 454. So we're gonna go ahead, 454. 95%, okay? 
then I want to know 90. We're going to do that by changing this. And that is 447. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look for um, 0 0.80 is usually as low as I go because after 0 0.80 we are in the 68% range. So 0 0.80 is 437. And now we're going to go into the neutral range, which is 50%. You can you can extend this a little bit, like if you want to have like the 75% range. I, I used to get crazy with this, like I do like literally every 5%, but it's just not necessary. So 419 is our 50% zone, okay? And we can change this to yellow to know that it's neutral. And this is our 50%. And you can see that we've fallen below it. So now we have to calculate our downside, 80, 90, 95, uh, uh, 99, okay? So now we're gonna go down to this function. We're gonna go 80. So that's 401. We're going to change this to green. 401. And this is 80% of values are going to close above, right? So here, 80% of our values are going to close above this level. We're going to go So 90% of our values are going to close above. We're going to see 0 0.95. 34. So 34. It's going to be 95. And then, of course, we're going to do 99. And it's 370, OK? 370. And it's 99. So now we have our support and resistance on the major time frames right now this isn't going to work for like short-term intraday trading but these are really important levels to have saved on your charts for tickers that you trade because you need to know when the range is capped to the upside and when it's capped to the downside you see we don't stay down here long we didn't stay up here long so now that I've extended the screen, what we can do is we can actually open up this function in trading view. It's called the object tree and data window. And what we can do is we can right click on, oh, sorry. We can click on this new folder and we can throw this stuff into a new folder. Okay. So now we can toggle this on and off. Um, when we want to reference it, uh, and when um, we don't need it. So we can rename this. Uh, what are we going to name it? ND for normal distribution. Okay. So when we need to see our ND levels, we can toggle it on, and when we don't, we can toggle it off. So it's good to have these saved on the charts that you are paying attention to. I usually um, have them plotted out. I use Excel. I don't have any fancy indicator to do this for me because it is a very nuanced calculation. So um, yeah, just have it saved and you have your levels. Okay. Now we can also program an indicator to save these levels for us. Okay. So, so what we can do here is we can create a bunch of input variables. as our support and resistance. So if we look here, if we open back up, we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine levels in total, right? So we're gonna need to do this nine times. Okay, so I went ahead and just did it. So here are our nine inputs, all labeled, all right? And so all we have to do now is just use plot, IL, plot, I2. Okay, I am back. Now what we can do is we can um, change the colors to correspond with whether it, the probability is up, above, or low, right? So we'll change these to color red. Okay, so I've done it for the four upper levels. Now we're going to do um, color neutral for our neutral line. And now we're going to do color green. I like lime. <coughs> for our lower levels. Okay, so now we are done. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna give it a title, so let's call it prob levels. We need to say overlay equals true because we want it to overlay on our chart and we're gonna add it to our chart, okay? Okay, so now we can hide our prob levels here, and there we go. Look at that, it's plotted for us. Okay, now what we can do, we can do a couple of things. <clears throat> we can create a variable called offset, and let's assign it a value of 30. Then if we go here and say offset, offset, Okay, so I've went ahead and done that. So when we update the chart, we're gonna see what this does, and it just offsets our support and resistance so that it goes out a little bit more in advance. You see like this, and we can see them a little bit better, okay? We can also attach labels to our support and resistance levels. And you should remember how to do that. We can use the var label. We can call label one equals NA. Uh, we can say if var state is last, label label one equals label dot new um, var index plus offset because we want it to align with our offset. Um, our Y is going to be, let's do one on I1. So our Y is gonna be I1. And our text is going to be 99% below. We'll do um, color equals color red, text color equals, um, oops, text color equals color white. We need to put in a label dot delete, label one, and we can add that to the chart. And there we go, 99% below. So we can repeat it for all of our levels if we want those labels, okay? Now what we can do once we have saved our indicator. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna make sure that we save our indicator, okay? We can save as default, all right? So when we save it as default, when we come back to open up our indicator, they'll be saved, just like that, just like magic. So these are both ways you can do it. Um, you can actually assign them specific names. You can say prob levels um, for spy, and then just copy the coding, create another indicator for 
a different ticker and you can have the variables just saved as defaults, okay? Um, it's however you want to do it. Um, the, both are appropriate ways. The indicator just saves you from having to plot things. You can have it all um, ready to go and it just saves you some time, okay? We can even do some fills. So if we want to get a little fancy, I'm just going to show you this one last thing and then we're going to be done with this lesson today, okay? So if we want to get a little fancy, let's say we want to have a red fill between IL1 and IL2. Let's create a color. So we're going to tell PineScript that we want to create a color. We're going to call it red fill. We're going to say red fill equals. We're going to use a function called color.new. We're going to open up our brackets. We're going to say color.red, comma, and trans means transparency. So we can say we want it to be pretty transparent. We want it to be about 90%, OK? So we want a red fill between IL1 and IL2. So what we have to do is we have to declare our plot. And that just means we need to assign it to a variable. So we're going to assign it to a variable A. And IL2 is going to be variable B. Okay, and now let's make another color for green fill. Same concept, we're going to go color.new, we're going to use color lime, I just prefer lime, but you can use color green, 90, okay, and we're going to do the bottom two as C and D, okay? Then we're going to use a function called fill. We're going to say A comma B. The color is red fill, okay? We're going to repeat fill, um, C and D. It's going to be green fill. We're going to save it. Make sure there's no errors, nope. And there we go, we have our fills. Just to keep it looking cute. And we can do it for all of the levels, whatever you want, you know? I would recommend maybe filling this because this is our neutral zone, right? Between 80 and 80 is our neutral zone. So this is a very important zone, you want it to stand out. And you want these zones to stand out too, right? Because these are our extreme zones, here and here, okay? And so that concludes today's level, uh, lesson. Uh, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you found this informative. Uh, again, it was a bit of a math heavy lesson. We're gonna continue on the talks of the normal distribution into our next lesson. And then we're gonna get into some other distribution types and how we can calculate support and resistance with those. So enjoy your weekend, everybody. Thanks for watching. Take care.